friends it's the weekend i'm feeling a little bit more human um i uh, it's raining outside which is rude yesterday morning i went to a sound bath and meditation class with a friend that was really fun i haven't uh, I went to one at this the same studio a few weeks ago by myself because my friend was um, away and then I saw I invited her if she wanted to come with me this time it was really fun she's a yoga teacher so she's very into all of that and I really have a complicated relationship with anything that's like vaguely cloaked in wellness um, but I have been trying We've been trying to do two things. I've been trying to do more stuff by, by myself or like with my, like friends that are just mine instead of like a lot of our social circles. Um, friends with other couples, which I love and it's so fun, but I wanted, yeah, just to like feel a bit more of a sense of independence. And I've spoken in recent blogs about, yeah, just feeling like I've lost a bit of myself. So yeah, I think part of that is doing new stuff I guess and it's not new just like doing stuff that I have shied away from or have been too unwell to do and to be fair I probably wasn't well enough to do this yesterday but because it was just lying down and I managed to get an Uber there um it was okay and it was yeah really fun and I used to go to a few different sound baths and before I was before the pandemic which has coincided with like a quite a steep decline in my health um I yeah it was pretty regular going to yoga class and stuff like that um, and Brighton is obviously such a hub for any kind of woo woo activity so it was nice to get back to some of that and I don't think I'm gonna make it my whole personality but I did I did really enjoy it and like even if it doesn't even if you don't buy into sort of like the impacts and the effects it can have on your body and your mind it's more just like it was a fun peaceful activity that was like a nice way to spend some time with a friend you know it doesn't have to be any deeper than that so that's what I did yesterday and then I came home slept for ages as I always do after an outing and then I haven't been able to knit which is really annoying uh the friend I who's the yoga teacher is also a really big knitter and we mostly sit and knit as our hangout time but I wasn't able to because I've um I've actually taken them off because they need a wash because I get oh my god it's hailing sorry the weather is changing as we're watching um because I spilt something on them but I have hurt my hand which is not unusual for me uh especially with oh, can you hear that um especially like with repetitive motion it's pretty common and because of being so unwell the past couple of weeks I've been in bed a lot which I have um like really hurt my neck basically I have neck problems with EDS so all of that to say I've got an emergency physio appointment with my physio tomorrow which hopefully he can straighten me out because we are going on a trip uh over Easter we leave on Saturday and so Yesterday evening Tom packed his stuff, but I had to get out like my box of summer clothes because we're going to the beach. Um, and then I started a whole spiral of trying stuff on and now I'm not gonna show you, but that is an utter mess of stuff all over the floor. And all I've narrowed down is like one pair of trousers and three swimsuits. That's about it. The rest of it I've decided I hate. So that's good. And I don't have the time nor the energy nor the funds to go and buy loads of new summer clothes. So I'm gonna have to make do with what I've got. This today, so today I need to finish packing basically. And I think our neighborhood friends are coming over for breakfast. Tom's at the gym right now and getting ingredients and then we'll just have a low key hangout session. But the reason why I started this vlog, which I don't normally vlog after I've just been really unwell and before a trip, which is a collision of uh, immovable dates, but I have, because of being unwell, really unwell, not reading for a couple of weeks, I've got like a few half finished books that I really want to tie up because I like to go on a trip with like starting a new book when I'm on the way. Do you know what I mean? I don't like to come with half finished books. I don't mind audiobooks so much, but yeah, I don't know. Having three half finished books is a bit annoying and I really want to just like clear them also it's the end of May March <laughs> at the end of 
the weekend so it would be just like a perfect end to the month would be to finish these that have been lingering so you and I are going to um are going to work on that together and keep me accountable for finishing these um so yeah the first one I spoke about in a vlog before this is Pet by Catherine Chig Chidgy this is Pet which I spoke about yeah like I said before and it follows Justine and what's the other girl's name this is like probably three weeks I haven't read this one even before I was um in my crash Justine and her friend are at this Catholic school in the 80s and their teacher Mrs Price did I just make up her name no, I'm pretty sure that's her name is her is their teacher and she's like this enigmatic mysterious single woman sort of uh, whoop, taking the classroom like all the kids are just enamored by her and so are the different people in their town it's in New Zealand but things start going missing in the classroom including this beloved pen belonging to Justine's mother who passed away and um she Justine is pushing down all these feelings of unease about the teacher and we're not sure what's going on so I'm 50% through this one then I am um, I only have about 30 pages to go with this one which is cult classic by Sloan Crosby I picked this up when I was starting to feel poorly I can't remember why I put this one down and picked this one up but anyway, for some reason, I decided that was a bit too literary, so I wanted something a bit more chill. But then I put this one down as well, too, because I was unwell. But I started reading this again in the last few days, um, even when I was still in bed. So this, I also spoke about because I got it in a second-hand bookshop in Amsterdam um, and said it had been on my radar. So this is really even more odd than the back described. So we follow this woman who is working at this psychology magazine has this boss and like this group of journalist friends and they're all like very close and go out for these big, big dinners and then the magazine folds and they all sort of find their ways to different career paths adjacent to journalism or in different areas and still continue to go for these dinners with their big boss Clive who was the like editor-in-chief and then one day she our main character starts to run into two she firstly she runs into two ex-boyfriends in one night even though she's like happily engaged to this new guy like they're really going steady kind of thing like he's not swept her his name is boots well his name is max but he goes by boots but he's sort of quite different to her in lots of ways but it's just like so kind and loving that she's like i guess he's the one but then old men start appearing in her life and we realize that actually clive who's become this sort of guru leader entrepreneur type figure who set up this basically underground private members club kind of thing that is um in some way connected to the reason why all her boyfriends are showing up um i only have about 30 pages left of this and we're still yet to find out <clears throat> sort of the purpose i guess it's quite silly but um in a way that's not really funny to me <laughs> so that's kind of my worst combination of books I think is like silly without humor that appeals to me and there are a few lines that I'm like unsure if I'm supposed to laugh at or if Sloan Crosby is Crosley is trying to say something sort of earnest and profound about this hypothetical I guess it's kind of dystopian but just like magical invention that she's created in the story i'm unsure whether or not i guess it, like it just feels a bit um i'm not sure where i am on my footing whether i'm it's supposed to all be taken in jest or if she's trying to make some really profound statements about love and romance and monogamy i can't say i've enjoyed it so far like it's been fine it's easy to read but and there's a best friend character who's quite funny but besides that, it's just, I'm not really sure what it's, what it was aiming for, if that makes sense. It, it feels unclear, which I, 
I can find that quite frustrating in books sometimes. Um, if it is trying to be purposefully profound and earnest in those places, and I think I'll be annoyed if the ending is trying to pull this all together and say, haha, wouldn't you think that actually we are, you know, the picture of the past seven people we've dated and da -da -da. Like, I think I'll be really pissed off because I just don't think it's as clever as it thinks it wants to be if it's trying to be serious, if that makes sense. So would love to hear if you've read Cult Classic, but this is what I'm going to try and finish today, I think, after my friends go. I'll read a bit of this. And then the final non-fiction book I've been reading is A Necessary Kindness Stories from the Frontline of Abortion Care by Juno Carey. This is out with Atlantic and I'm actually switching between the audio. This is a proof copy, but it is out now. Came out on the 7th of March and I'm switching between this. Oh, look, it goes in my nails. This and the audio book, which is on Everand. This I knew would be a hard read, but like I was crying on the tram listening to this when I first started it um so Juno Carey was a midwife in the NHS um really burnt out and overwhelmed by just the lack of resources and how like how little she had left in her to be able to care for the women who were having babies or the people that were having babies so she decided to pivot her career in and worked as a like a medical practitioner in an abortion clinic in London I think um, and so she takes us through chapter by chapter different types of people that come in for um, abortion care so it starts with like a difficult start at their most vulnerable close to home and those so difficult start was about young people and then vulnerable was like talking about people who were in coercive relationships or who were trafficked who, who were being held against their will in this country and then Close to home was about people traveling from Northern Ireland who receive care. And this book was published just after, or was written, or at least comments on Roe versus Wade being overturned in the US, so she has a lot of comparison. But she's really trying to dispel a lot of myths about abortion care, both to people who are anti choice, but also to people who, like, I've never personally sought out abortion care for myself, although I have accompanied various people and like sort of done research on behalf of of people but there is still so much that you just don't know that because you're not taught because it is still so taboo and so filled with so much shame and guilt in terms of wider society and personal beliefs that um she is yeah talking with so much knowledge and expertise about the the ins and outs of the care and also about for example yeah like with Northern Ireland and like uh, various difficulties that like, I didn't realise that which this is just my own ignorance but people who travel from Northern Ireland obviously I did know that they have to often come in secret because of various social and religious experiences but because of the way that the if you have like a abortion based using pills often they are passing the most painful part of the process while they are on the aeroplane going back home because lots of people can't afford to stay the night or they have child like they're someone's looking after their children back in um back at home if they already have kids and like people often just get the first flight out and the last flight home and so people are going through these experiences so alone and with so much shame and I mean, plain bathrooms are hideous places at the best of times, and I've been sick in plenty of them. So to imagine being, like, to go through something so visceral, so physically painful for some, um, so emotionally tumultuous, all alone in a toilet on an aeroplane for the sake of, but like, because our policymakers cannot get their shit together, like, and cannot we cannot organise proper care for people. It's just so, like, made me so upset and then so angry. In the next chapter that I started listening to yesterday is about anti-choice and it's all about the, um, which I really like and I really want to practise that, like, completely switching my vernacular away from pro-life and because it, it's not pro-life, it is anti-choice, about the anti-choice protesters who sit outside um, Carrie's clinic where she works and sort of, then the wider conversation she references various MPs, which is Sunak, so Ella Raven, Jacobs Rees Mogg, who've all come out and said, like, we need to roll back abortion care in the UK. We need less access to it. And it's just makes my blood 
boil and also made me think about how much I want to look into it here like what the rights are in this country and also they talk about the like anti anti-choice group so like the um the people who go and support and provide counter protests and accompany people into the clinics and like these different movements that have happened she talks about this group in Ealing who wore these like anti-harassment pink vests and with like I support your choice and stuff and I was like oh that would be something I would sew if I was ever well enough like I think I would find so empowering and so like you're actually doing something useful you know so that is all to say this is brilliant but it's so 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 heavy so I do really want to finish this because it's not some radiating holiday reading to me personally but again it is um it is a, obviously a complicated one so those are the current reads I'm going to like I say try and finish cult classic I think I've narrowed down the books I'm taking on my trip so I should be able to show those to you later as well and then um yeah I'll catch up with you hopefully when I finish something an update friends I finished um wow well, it's a lot more rough than I did in the last one. I finished cult classic by Sloane Crosby and as a lovely patron said on my latest newsletter a strong meh a hard meh this was I think trying to be profound at the end I will be open to interpretation if anyone else feels like it wasn't it was meant to be less sort of serious than it ended up being but for me didn't really do it it was an easy enough read but I wouldn't call it an everescent delight nor unbelievably smart no no those things I did not find true but yeah would love to hear your thoughts if you have read it but I've read one of her essay collections in the past a long time ago like probably when I was like 19 or 20 I think um and I did and I remember thinking not much fit at the time, but you know me, if it's got cold in the title, I will be purchasing it. The other thing I did manage to do is drink my kombucha and pack my suitcase, which involved choosing my books. Um, Tom and I, I picked, I picked these, I won't lie to you, Tom had no choice, but I gave, I showed him them in review because obviously we don't want to take like you have a limited space in the suitcase and we've had loads of books, like our own personal five books each, this is shared. And also this is like more choice than we obviously need. I'm not expecting to read four books and our book club book in 10 days, but we like the option. My mom will also be bringing a ton of books. And I also have in the back of my head, like having a couple of these that she can read because she reads so fast on holiday like a book sometimes a book and a half a day so she's the one who needs like seven or eight books but our book club book we're going to read is the lagos wife which i put in a uh radar video recently and loads of the books in the radar video are really appealing but i gave my mum the shortest option we also thought about blessings which was the one about the boy sent to a catholic boarding school after his parents finding him kissing a member of they're like gardening stuff. Um, but I think it was also set in Nigeria. But I wanted something with a bit more oomph, like in terms of plot driven. But I think my mum actually did end up purchasing blessings as well for her own reading. So if she does pick that on holiday, I'll either read it or I'll take it home with me. But these are the four I went for for Tom and I. This one I don't think I'm going to read on holiday, but I know Tom will. It's a Christmas card for my friend in it. It's a good bookmark. This is Wandering Stars by Tommy Orange. I love Tommy Orange's first book, They're There, and so did Tom, and he's been desperate to read this one. So this is like lower down my priority list just because I've heard it's so devastating and sad, but he's really keen to read it. and He loved They're There um, just as much as me, and he really likes reading about um, indigenous nation communities, like in First Nations groups in Canada or um, indigenous Americans. So um, 
that is what Tommy Orange writes about, so I think he will. This will be like one of his top reads. And then, and which is the proof, by the way, but it's out on 21st of March, so it's out now. Um, then I decided on the proof of Rachel Kong's Real American. This is out on, in May, it doesn't have the date actually. The only thing that's putting me off is, is the font's quite small, so I think it's gonna be quite a long read, but this is a family saga, with a shout out, Sunny's bookmark in it. Um, love the new color, such a good green. This is a family saga, which I've been really craving reading, and obviously I read Greta and Valdin and spoke to you guys about how much I loved that. Is there something on the lens? A bit clearer, or is it just dark outside today? Probably both. Um, which I loved and I'm like looking for that and really put me in the mood to read more family sagas. This one is a about a Chinese American family and it's like a dual timeline. It says like on the precipice of Y2K, Lu Chen is attempting to live the American dream. Her parents fled Mao's cultural revolution. And then the present day timeline is her son trying to find out more about their family history, which he, Lily hasn't been very forthcoming about. So. As the title suggests, Real American, it's about the shattering of the American dream, the model minority complex, and the um, like third space, living with immigrant parents, all of those kind of conversations, which I really love reading about. But I also think it will have that, it says like family secrets and that kind of stuff, which will give it that propulsion that I'm looking for while reading for more four hours at a time. Because that's what you're really looking for on a holiday, I guess, is a book that can sustain your interest for a longer period of time than a book you read in your everyday life. Like, when I'm in my working week, I'm reading for like maybe an hour um, a day, sometimes longer. And on the weekend, it can be longer periods. But you're looking on holiday, I'm reading like, you know, multiple hours at a time in a short space of time as well. So you want something that's going to really hold your interest. So that's The Real Americans. Then I chose Bel Canto by Anne Patchett. This I picked up over Christmas actually in a bookshop in Cornwall and Tom and I chose it and said like, oh, this would be probably a holiday read for us. It's about a group of like wealthy, I think they are Americans or they might be from um, a Latin American country, but basically they're in Latin America at a party and it doesn't actually say, it just says in South America, so I'm not sure which country. Um, and they're basically held hostage by a group of terrorists and you follow the characters as they try and make alliances and board relationships and stuff like that. Um, I'm intrigued and nervous about the representation of different characters and identities in this book, but it is well blurbed and it won the Women's Prize a few, a long time ago actually. And it's quite short, but has again, that propulsive element, that plot. This is definitely the most rompy one, aside from the Lagos Wife, which is our book club book. So that's Bel Canto. And then I just threw in some short stories. I've been meaning to read this book for so long. It was edited by Molly who is an online friend and um, my uh, best friend Siska knows Molly as well and really loved this book. And I just haven't been in the mood to read short stories, but I think they can be really good to even like jewel read if you're on holiday and you're reading multiple hours. Like if you get not feeling like you're reading your novel, you can just pick up a story and put it down or in the evening time. So I'm really looking forward to finally getting to this one and prioritizing it. So this is Peach Pit, it's published by, I can't remember, it's an American indie. But it's basically a collection of short stories about like morally grey women and complicated relationships. So it has some really great writers in here. Kaming Chang, Disha, Phil Shaw, who wrote The Secret Lives of Church Ladies, which is one of my all-time favourite short story collections. And um, 13 other best-selling authors. It's got like some debut authors, some up-and-coming authors. Um, Molly has a story in here. So yeah, I'm just really excited to get to this one. And I hope that I'm sure it's going to live up to all my expectations. So those are the five books I've chosen plus my book but like I said I need the selection I've got the space in the suitcase and that's what we decided to pick I'm also I'm gonna do a couple of audiobooks as well because often I'm too tired to read for long periods of time like when I say reading for hours I mean like across the day you know I'm not sitting there focusing on a book for four hours at a time like I would be dead to the world if I did that so it's more switching things up and I think an audio book will be great as well especially for the flight so I looked at a flat place which is the author escapes me but it's a Pakistani Scottish young woman talking about diasporic experiences in Scotland and I think about relationships with her mother perhaps it was up for the young writers prize by the times and I saw my friend Beth on Instagram talking about it and a couple of other people 
So that one I'm eyeing. And to be honest, yeah, I haven't really heard much about audiobooks. I've still got the Britney audiobook in the back of my mind, but not sure. There's a new book out by Dr. Devon Price called Unshaming or Shame, which I really love um, their books. I think they're so smart and their book on laziness is like one of the best non-fiction books I always recommend to people. So thinking about that one, but I do, again, don't know if that's holiday vibes and yeah, unsure when this video is going to go up. But if you do, I'm always in looking for audio book recommendations. So I feel like they're harder to find non-fiction audio. Would love to hear it. I think I said that in my last video as well. Um, but otherwise, I'm going to get to pet this evening. That's the plan. It's getting darker by the moment outside so um i will speak to you guys it's Wednesday I look a bit disheveled it could be that I'm in my pajamas but these aren't my pajamas I actually got dressed today um but I did just wake up from a two and a half hour long nap also something's going on with my fringe um what else was I gonna say about my hair oh that I wanted if anyone has any advice I um I'm on yet more drugs and new drugs um one of them hormonal related and I think it's changed my like how greasy my hair gets and I looked up online and a few people had said that and like my skin is suddenly really oily and I've always had dry skin could of course been a coincidence but now it's like it was just came on all of a sudden and I have to wash my hair literally every other day otherwise my fringe is like slicked to my forehead and it just feels like it's not even like oh I'll get over it and wear my hair in a bun it's it's like that greasiness that really hurts and aches so if anyone has any advice I'm using the way is it called like apple cider vinegar i bought like a small one hair shampoo but i don't really know if that's doing that i stopped using conditioner for a bit because i thought maybe that would be so like weighing it down but it actually just made it like dry on the bottom and oily on the top side and really didn't think so yes if anyone like has been on any kind of endo drugs and experienced that or um has any like really great shampoo because i've never had oily hair like I've, i have definitely like had hair that was greasy and then you know slowly trained it if that's even a real thing that you do but I just remember as a teenager um and I was washing my hair like twice a week and now it feels like three or four times which feels excessive it doesn't work for my like energy levels and it's just overall bad vibes so because we're going on holiday I'm hoping I can just like leave it so I really don't care what I look like especially in the daytime on holiday and that it doesn't feel like I don't know because I could I don't really know if you could train it out of it if it is just producing so much excess oil because of the hormonal change anyway that was not what I came on here to do I went to get a pedicure on my it's Wednesday did I say that that's my day off <laughs> um I went to get a pedicure which was really nice but then I was so exhausted I came home and slept for two and a half hours that was fun but I wanted to report back because I oh I haven't tried this on I got this top brand new with labels on vintage for two euros which in my head i'm like what's the point of selling something for two euros but i guess people just want to get rid of stuff it's quite cute it's just like basically a summer top but i might even wear it this is the um the back it's meant to be but the like if you wore it back to front it's giving like ganny so i'm gonna try that on later just looking for more i don't even know if that's cotton it doesn't feel great i won't lie um, I know it is 100% cotton. Um, I'm just looking for more floaty tops as we come into warmer weather. Book wise, first I finished Pet. I really enjoyed this. I can pretty definitively say I would have enjoyed it more if I didn't leave it alone for three weeks halfway through. It took me a while to get back into it and I feel like I didn't, it builds to like a really suspenseful point where you're waiting the whole time to find out really who is this Mrs. Price, like what is her agenda and what she left it up, left to do because you have that present day storyline of knowing the young girl Justine that we follow, we have her as an adult, 
in the care home looking after her dad and then we have the 80s where um basically we know something isn't going to work out for mrs price because of what we know about the present day but it it takes till the very end to connect it all together um it's quite harrowing like part of it um i think and it is a good like it is a romp in places but i wouldn't say would I say that you could just pick it up for a slump? I'm not sure about that. I feel like I'm not in a good place to judge that because I did read it basically in two halves. I did really enjoy it. Love the setting. Love 1980s Catholic school in New Zealand. Love just like thinking about New Zealand when I was reading it, about Wellington and about sort of the specificities of those different situations. Um, and no, I really did enjoy it. I'm almost like annoyed at myself that I didn't read it in a in the way that I think would be best. You know, this is definitely like a bingeable book. Really excited for Tom to read it, really excited for my mum to read it. I just think it has, um, yeah, it does hit the spot. Although there is, yeah, I think it does hit the spot for those books that um, I've been talking about a lot on this channel and you guys having great conversation in the comments about like those literary books that don't feel like emotionally draining. I would say for the most part that does hit this because there is like a crime element at the core of this, but it's not, um, it's not like abuse or like and something that feels really heavy but in the same way it's not as light as Greta and Baldin and that kind of like family saga because there is like grief right from the start of this book um and a young girl who's like without her mum so and that's not that's not a giveaway that's in the first bit but yeah I would say it's edging towards that like it's not super super heavy so it might fit the bill if you're looking for something like that and the change of scenery if you if, unless you obviously live in New Zealand which I know some of you do um some lovely couple of lovely people on my Patreon often chat about um New Zealand and yeah I think it could it could fit the bill if you're looking for that kind of literary book by Europa and I sleep on Europa a bit you know like I don't keep up with their catalogue as much as I should I feel like maybe they don't have a very good Instagram presence which is where I see a lot of new releases from like presses that I really like so maybe I need to revisit that but that is pets and then today while I was having my pedicure I finished the last chapter of this on audio this is a necessary kindness story from the front line of abortion care this was brilliant so so brilliant but it's so educational informative i learned so much i am really quite ill-informed about the the med the medical aspect of abortion like i know the basics and i know where i stand like morally and ethically but um this was just so educational without being dry and it really put uh humanity at its heart and it really talked about just so many different experiences, but it didn't feel like that wasn't all Juno Carey was doing. She wasn't just collecting people's interviews and then reposting them. She really grouped them together and brought her own narrative in. She talked about her experience as a queer woman going through IVF, working in the clinic while having her own miscarriage while being pregnant, how she felt like being pregnant impacted her career because obviously like to be physically carrying child while working in a place where people are trying to decide whether or not they want to continue carrying a child is, is really complicated and um, she makes some great points and stances against the way the Conservative government currently is dealing with abortion and she talks about the very recent cases of prosecution in the UK I think it was 2022 they prosecuted someone because abortion is technically still illegal because of like like obviously this operates but in a like this as in the clinics operate but in a technicality sense a lot of these things aren't technically legal and she talks about how vital that is and the danger of rolling back hair and compares it to the US and it really started me when she was like it will start with reducing the number of weeks reducing the types of people that can have it and then we will see a blanket ban like that is something she believes could be in the future because of how destructive and inhumane the current government is and that's terrifying but yeah I just thought this was so good it's obviously a harrowing topic and difficult to read about not in the sense of like abortion always has to be harrowing she talks about that as well it's like how it can be how she does meet women who don't have any qualms who aren't feeling like panicked or unaware but it's harrowing in the sense of the people that have to go through so many things people who are trafficked people in coercive and abusive relationships people who are traveling from abroad all these different people who are 
so hard done by and so unfairly treated in, in the wider system of um, care for people who do or don't want to carry on pregnancy. Um, and she talks a bit about is TOFCA, TOFCA, it's like a acronym for um, basically people who stop pregnancies because of because the pregnancies are unviable for like medical reasons or for life limiting illnesses. She doesn't go into super detail. She talks about Ed one and um, one thing called Ed Edward syndrome, and she then she has an anecdote about a very religious couple who decide to keep going with their baby even though they know the baby has Edward syndrome and. Edward syndrome is a very severe um, issue with a fetus that means that like, they'll never live past the age of one, basically, but they carry on with the baby because that's what their religion has instructed them to do kind of thing. So she touches on that, but I could have read a whole book about religious and moral choices in that sense. But I just thought it was so, so good. I really, really recommend it. She talks about the NHS and how complicated it is. And she also talks, the final chapter I listened to today was about aftercare and the number of women and people who end pregnancies and have complications and then are mistreated, disbelieved, um, talked down to when they have to go into a hospital. For example, like they take the pills at home and something happens and the, the clinic advises them to go straight to a hospital because that's where they would send them even if they came in kind of thing, just to um, quicken it. And the amount of disdain from different doctors and stuff that say like, well, what did you expect? You entered a pregnancy, so what did you expect? And just like horrific, ill-informed, unethical ways of talking to people that are so underhanded. And obviously it's not the same, but like with my experiences and with talking to, you know, knowing and talking to so many people in the chronic illness community who are treated that way, in hospitals and just women in general who who are going for, for pain issues and who are told like shut up and get over it it's wild that that just like continues across the board for all of these things and she you know carrie talks about how they're trying to combat that through like providing letters and emails and how they, how they have to work so hard just to stop a woman from a, a life-threatening situation if she might bleed out and still they're like well that's what you asked for kind of thing which is just grim as fuck so yeah i just thought this was really well done not preachy not moralistic you can clearly see obviously working in the clinic and then her the student from the start you can tell that she's obviously passionate and pro reproductive rights and people having autonomy over their bodies um but has so much rebuttal and good and has made so many good points like against the anti-choice thing so yeah really good on every round if you want the audio or it's out now to buy with atlantic so that is all of the three books I wanted to get through before I can start afresh for April, which I feel really good about. Um, and I'm excited to read some ROMs, to listen to a new audio book. And yeah, I think this might be the last vlog for a little while. I'm not going to vlog on my holidays, but I will, or at least on here, I will be reporting back probably on Patreon. But I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for listening. Bye.